62 years ago, on November 9th and 10th, the Nazis conducted a series of attacks against Jews in Germany. This became known as Kristallnacht, or the Night of the Broken Glass. It's reported that a quarter of all Jewish men in Germany were taken to concentration camps on that night. There are a few people left to remember this sad time in history. However, Real to Real's Peggy Weber got a chance to talk to Michael Preisler, a Polish Catholic who survived Auschwitz. Michael Preisler looks like a cheerful senior citizen. In fact, he is. However, he could be a bitter, miserable man. He has suffered terribly as a prisoner in a Nazi concentration camp. However, Michael is a man of hope and someone who wants to make sure that nothing so dreadful as the Holocaust ever happens again. I was on the underground. I was actually fighting the German army. We have to do destructions, for instance, like burn trains when they come with the army, when they go with the transport of the uh, military transports. Uh, we do a lot of things, you know, that they, they do damage. Michael's resistance work was his way of helping his homeland. One of 13 children, he was arrested. They know already, who are you? They come to my house one night and they say, your name is Michael Preisler, yes. And that's it. You come with us. And never come back. Eventually, they took Michael to one of the most horrific places ever created by man, Auschwitz. And finally, they say, you know what Auschwitz is. I heard about Auschwitz. That's where you go. Auschwitz was one of the places where 11 million died during the Holocaust. It is estimated that 6 million of those were Jews. Almost 2 million were Polish Catholics. Michael, a native of New York, thinks that Holocaust survivors must continue to tell their story. I will tell them about this. It's a, we did have a lot of bad people, and that's a true story about the killing killing innocent people. Remember one thing, the poor innocent people. He said he does not understand how anyone could say that the Holocaust did not exist. What does he say to them? Full baloney. <laughs> never happened, it never happened, yes. And other things, nothing happened. The tattoo, number 2213 on his arm, is proof enough for Michael and for many others. The experience has stayed with him, but through it, he has maintained his faith. I do pray every day. That doesn't mean that it has been easy to reconcile those three years of misery to living a life of faith and forgiveness. He said he has forgiven his captors, but that it has been very hard. My opinion, actually, is it's tough to forgive them. It's tough to forgive them because they were doing everything what they can do to kill you or to suffer. Mm -hmm. My religion say, we got to forgive and we forgive them. But the, uh, it's tough. It's tough to be forgiven. Michael spent nearly three years in Auschwitz and then was part of a forced march from there to another death camp, Matthausen, in Austria. It was called the Days of Red Snow because so many prisoners bloodied the snow from injuries or death along the way. It was there he was liberated by General George Patton's Third Army. And in a moment of great grace, Michael met one of his liberators at the men's conference. Deacon Bill Mosley of St. Charles Parish in Pittsfield served in World War II and approached the podium to speak to Michael. I was with the 9th Infantry Division of General George Patton's Third Army. I spent a little over a year and a half in combat in Germany and we liberated both Auschwitz and Mauthausen. And I just had to come down. I know what you've been through. These pictures here bring back many, many sad memories for me. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Michael said it is important to continue to speak about his experience. He subscribes to the theory, never again, because he has seen humankind at its worst. Michael truly wants everyone to learn from his horrific experience. First thing first, we have to work on peace. And we have to work together 
with all children together, all people together. There's no, no such a thing, nationality, religion, and everything. We should all be together. Michael's life and lesson of love is one he wishes that all would learn. For Real to Real, I'm Peggy Weber. And next year's Catholic Men's Conference will be Saturday, April 2nd, and feature Jesuit father Mitch Packway, president and founder of Ignatius Productions and the host of several programs on EWTN.